Welcome to the Southport Winter Whiskey Festival. We're three sessions in on the first day and uh, things are starting to heat up. Um, we have Jamie and Stuart from Douglas Lang. Douglas Lang are very, very, I was going to say famous, but probably well known around Southport for uh, making this fabulous grain whiskey. Um, and the challenge for the two boys tonight is to take us through five of their exceptional grains. Now, Jamie and I put this together, oh, must be what, oh, two months ago? I, I have to say, Jamie, you've, you've, I think you were try, you're trying to outdo Fred from the summer, I think. <laughs> it's nice to see you. How are you? Oh, do not bad. Uh, just same as ever, fighting away. Um, and um, <laughs> fighting the wee one. So now we're doing all right. And uh, Stuart and I are, we spoke earlier on today, absolutely delighted to uh, interrupt our time off with, with some really heavy work to do uh, on a Monday night. <laughs> I told well, the, the hardships of drinking this green. <laughs> I know. Stuart's been warming up for this tasting for the next seven days. So, um, <laughs> so he's, he's in fine fettle. No, we're <laughs> to be here and when I, when I said to Stuart if he fancied coming on and I'd been part of the tasting when, when, whenever it was October Victor when we spoke mm -hmm. told him the, the lineup we were going for um, he, he jumped on pretty quickly there was no holding him back but um, I everyone recognised loads of names um, Jamie and you guys know me to UK North for uh, for Douglas Lane and, and Stuart's our ambassador so we're delighted to be here delighted to show you some some whiskies from our stable and uh, we've got five grain whiskies from three of our different brands, uh, which I think I put a note on Facebook earlier on today saying, oh, of course, the, the five whiskies, 138 years of maturation. So um, four of the whiskies we're going to taste are the, the final two bottles that existed. So that, that's their, their end of line. And then the, the middle dram we're going to do is the, the, the bottling we, we, we bottled solely for, for this festival. So just so you know the lineup we're going to go for, we're going to go North British 23 to start, and then we're going to go for the Cameron Bridge 25, and then on to the, the Southport Whiskey Festival exclusive uh, 30 year old, and then, the, sorry, that's the Cameron Bridge, and then the Canvas, and then finish on the Inver Gordon. So we're going to go straight into Dram 1, which is the, the North British 23 year old. Victor can chuck that slide up, that'd be great. Let me show you some slides. Let me see if I can do this. Here's the big test. Elliot's no festive uh, cigar for this one. How'd you like that? <laughs> How's that? Good. Oh, I'm not technology director for nothing. No, <laughs> I'm just down a slide. There we go. Almost there. Beautiful. Just a, a slide up there, just so you know where we're going to today. Four distilleries, five drams. So the first one we're going to is, is North British at uh, Edinburgh Distillery. So uh, quite a few of you were in a, a tasting. I did the first tasting I did with the Southport crew, which was in May, end of May, uh, earlier this year. And we showed a 23-year-old North British there. Uh, this is a sister cask, distilled on the same day, put in very similar woods uh, and completely different to that one we had uh, in, in May. Absolutely brilliant on the nose. So this has uh, been fully aged in a refill barrel and uh, bottled at 51.5%. We tend to bottle uh, our own particular bottlings at 48.4 or 51.5% uh, alcohol. And this is one of 183 bottles that came out of that. Absolutely gorgeous on the nose. Lovely full palette. And cereal, absolutely brilliant. What are you thinking, Stuart? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think cereal is one of the big things, but on the nose, you get that kind of zesty citrus, which is really bizarre because it goes into that much more kind of savoury, biscuity palate completely. Um, the great thing about North British, you see in Edinburgh, it's just on the other side of the train tracks. So you've got Murrayfield on the left as you're coming into Edinburgh. North British, you can actually see on the right side as you're going in. Uh, not that I'm ever looking at the right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, 23 year old and it's kind of on that cusp, especially with grains and you'll see this going into uh, all the whiskies that we got tonight. 20 years old is when grain really kind of comes to fruition, let's say. Um, you've got examples and like we've done examples of Portland Das at 12 years old even. Um, but really the kind of bottling for us, especially in a particular age, the minimum usually 
is about 20 years old. And that's when it comes to fruition. I definitely think you see that in the North British. We had this discussion Walker. earlier on with, um, we had uh, Tim Foster from William Grant's on. He had a 25 year old Gervin, uh, which was, which was, which was really, really clean. It was lovely. Uh, lovely green West game. We we're just talking about where we think the sweet spot is for green. Uh, and you're, you're yeah. saying it's over 20 years. I think, uh, Tim, Tim was Tim, Tim, Tim thought it was like mid twenties, and then a couple of our folk were like, "Well, it's actually okay into the mid thirties." Yeah, and I think there's loads of variables with that. You know, it's how what wood it's been put in. Is it a first fill onwards? Um, how the new make has been prepared within the coffee stills. There's so many different variables. I would say twenty plus, taking into account, you know, is it a first fill sherry? Is it a first fill bourbon? Is it a refill hogshead or whatever it is? And um, beyond, you know, if you're getting into your heavy refills, you're looking thirty plus. Um, but the great thing about whiskey is different woods. It just takes beautifully sometimes. And I think uh, this North British has definitely done that for, I mean, it's still 23 years old, but let's say a younger uh, fruition point of grain. Uh, Fee has just said milk bottle sweets, which I have not had in years. But I think it's a great tasting note. Uh, and porridge and Maltesers. That's, that's been my Christmas, basically. <laughs> <laughs> See, adding a little bit of water to it, the, the fullness in the mouth just really comes through. It's, it's amazing the difference it's made. I hope some folk have poured this out before and let it and let it breathe a little bit. Um, absolutely brilliant. And from first tasting this before, um, oh, I've skipped on a few there, Victor. Well, I'm just having a wee look. See if you, I can leave them up. And there's a uh, there's Victor's Fred, just having a nosy. Uh, I'm just <laughs> there's Fred with his dog there. Um, he, he wants a report back actually on how you boys do tonight. Uh, he always does, he's in here somewhere. <laughs> and then we've got what's this one, Jamie? Uh, well, you're moving us quickly, Victor. Uh, that's the, the Cameron Bridge 25 year old. I'll go back. I go back. Sorry, I, stick with that one. And sure, sure, can do his amb ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> you just sit back and relax there james the only reason you brought me in oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah so for those of you who don't know who we are and I've, I, I talk about this a lot but this is this is who we are and what we do at Douglas Lane while you're enjoying your your north british uh founded in 1948 the, the three people that you see up there obviously we got fred the unmistakable mustache that is there sitting with cooper the dog uh, his daughter cara lane who is our director of whiskey and her husband chris is our ceo uh, so that's the third generation now uh, of Douglas Lane family, which is amazing since 1948. Um, everything that we do, and this will be very true for what we've done, we've talked about, James talked about high strength alcohol, 48.4, 51.5 for all particulars normally. So everything that we do is high or natural cash strength alcohol, non-chill filtered and no caramel colouring. And the idea is as natural as it gets. The one thing I love, not just the fact how many bottlings we do a month and how many samples we get out as a uh, as staff, but the one thing I do love about working with Douglas Lane is the fact that I can pick up any bottle, any sample, and actually use the whiskey knowledge that I've picked up and make a hazard guess as, is this a single grain? Is it a single malt? What cask has this been in? How old might it be? Um, and that's what I love about it. Commercial bottlings, we see a lot of caramel colouring introduced to it and to what degree. Um, it's nice to be able to pick up whiskeys and actually use what knowledge we pick up on and gain from, from people across the industry and actually say, this is probably this. And I like that, I love that about it. But that's the same as everything we talk about is as natural as it gets, as close to drinking from the cask as possible is how we like to present our whiskey. Um, but I'm not gonna get too bogged down in all of this. We've got Cooper the dog there. And Jamie, you want to move on to our next one? Or do you yeah, want me to take up? We've got two Cameron Bridge whiskies um, that, that we're going to show you just as a, I suppose, a, a great comparison. Um, they were distilled not, not far away from similar dates. Um, one of them is five years older, which is the one we've done solely for, for Victor at Southport. Um, but this one here is the Cameron Bridge 25-year-old. So this has been fully, fully aged again in a refill hogshead. Well, the last one was a barrel, so this is a fully aged in a refill hogshead. 308 uh, bottles come out of it. And this is a, a brand that we use for different markets uh, called Clandenny. Um, Clandenny is a, a different brand that comes under Douglas McGivern. I'm sure Stuart will tell you better uh, about this than I will. Um, and it's a uh, yeah, 25 year old. Sorry, I've lost my place. So straight on the nose, uh, for me, it's like a strawberry creme bouillon. 
brilliant vanilla, as you always get with these uh, refill hogsheads. Older, older grain whiskies, lovely strawberry, and a little bit of spice. Really gentle color on really, really nice on the front palate. Super sweet, super vanilla, uh, pineapple, and uh, oh, tinned peaches. It's absolutely superb. That is delicious. That's a cracker. Is there any more of this? No, no. That was the last two bottles we did for for this. That is absolutely amazing. <laughs> Isn't that good? That's absolutely cracker. Fee's just put Caramac, which I actually had an inspiration oh. moment a few weeks ago and actually ordered some off Amazon. <laughs> I've not had Caramac in ages, but I actually see that sweetness and features that you're talking about, Jamie, is I think very true for the palate, especially. If you go back to, to our first North British, you'll see a massive difference between this. I think a lot of people say how grains are very similar to one another, but I think that's quite true just the, between the first two, seeing the immediate difference, unless you've necked your first one, might still be remnants in the glass, but going back and forth between them, there's a great difference. Knows the palate. And yeah, I think that strawberry, like, shortcake thing you were talking about, there's, there's sweetness, like really red berry sweetness in there, which I would never associate with green. But it's definitely in there. It is. It's just pure strawberries. It's great. Mm. So I, I should... Um, I should just... Make make clear to everybody who's who's on the uh, who's on the call um, that, that neither Stuart, Jamie, or I are lying tonight. So um, <laughs> we, did tasting, we did a tasting earlier this month. We did a blind tasting where only one of us was telling the truth. So we're actually all telling the truth tonight. Mostly telling <laughs> the truth. Um, yeah, we are all telling the truth. This is coming to bridge twenty five year old. And thank you very much for sending it down. Well, it's delicious. Absolutely delighted. Are you going to pretend to enjoy the drums tonight, Victor? <laughs> I gave you a bit of a hard time last night. I felt, <laughs> I yeah. I felt a bit bad about it. <laughs> At least I'm not trying to pretend something's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, those interesting history the last two distilleries have done North British and Cameron Bridge. I mean, Cameron Bridge is the, is the behemoth uh, that is the Azure out in Kirkcaldy way. Um, and it's you know, I was having a look at it today just to see what its production was at. And not that this means anything to anybody, but 105 million litres it makes of grain whiskey a year, which is just yeah. really unbelievable. Um, I usually hate looking up these things because it doesn't really matter. But the amount of, of grain they must go through just to, just to actually keep up capacity for that is, is absolutely astounding. You know, it's, um, an amazing place out there and we discussed and actually as a business we were having a look at places like yourself Victor you know you, you're the folk you've got down in, in Southport and how interesting green whiskey can be for for kind of whiskey communities like like you've got down there and we were wondering whether we could we could make a, a vatting of of a few casks to bring a, a more approachable price uh, for something like, uh, I mean, not the grain isn't cheap enough, but, um, you know, this Clandeni is about, it would retail for about £85-ish, or maybe £90-ish, but to be able to do a vatting of something maybe a tiny bit younger and have it retailing at 60, 70 quid would just be absolutely brilliant. Um, and I put it forward to the guys, uh, to Chris at Douglas Lane, and it's something we're putting together with very much you and, and, and the Southport community in mind. So I'll have something for you next month that will be of this ilk that will be quite interesting. So no, it's, it's been great um, s seeing the possibility with it. It's brilliant. So yeah. I, I think we, what, 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 what Douglas Ling has done with the, with the Southport Club and the kind of whole community around us is, you know, you've really built yourself a name around doing top quality grain releases. You know, we, we, we did the, the canvas uh, in the summer as a, mm. as a festival exclusive. And of course, Fred came on and, and talked talked a little bit about grain whiskey and a lot about the Rolling Stones, and um, <laughs> and uh, you know, if I have to be honest with you, I, if I get a delivery of of grain whiskey from Douglas Lang, it sometimes it doesn't even hit the shelf; it's gone. People are picking through it, pulling out what they want, put it on the website. Sometimes it's gone before it arrives. 
So you, so you do, you, you certainly have, but you know, you certainly have this reputation around the place for, 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 do, for doing good grain. And we sell, we, you know, we do, we do sell and drink a lot of it. I love that Rolling Stones reference. I remember, see the amount of videos I watched Red do or do tastings and he starts with, please allow me to introduce myself. It's, just, it's amazing. If anyone knows that reference to the specific song from the Stones, it's just the most casual thing. Uh, he's just, what's his, uh, what's his karaoke song, Jamie? I can't get no satisfaction. Um, it was, it was <laughs> the disappointing part of COVID for this year has been uh, us not getting our Douglas Lane karaoke Christmas party. Uh, it was Just for Fred. 70 last month, uh, end of November. And he um, still still goes out with his Rolling Stones impression every night out. Uh, buttons undone. If anyone knows Fred, you, you don't quite expect it coming. <laughs> And then it lasts for half an hour. So, <laughs> <laughs> so on the on one of the first slides that we showed there with uh, North British, you'll actually see the coffee spill uh, in the top right of the picture. I don't know if you can put that back, Victor, quickly before we jump straight on. Uh, on the right side, you see the coffee spill now. Uh, known as the coffee spill, Aeneas Coffee perfected it, but it was a guy. I'm an absolute geek, and don't don't mind me if I'm boring here. Was a guy who was a Scotsman, Robert Stein, that actually invented it. So when we're talking about Cameron Bridge, moving on to the next one, uh, the Steins and the Hagues were a massive family that kind of started uh, Cameron Bridge Distillery. Uh, and it was actually the cousin, it was John's cousin who started it, Robert Stein, that actually invented the coffee stills. So Cameron Bridge was one of the first distilleries to actually have what we not know as today, but effectively the coffee still in. Um, but Aeneas Coffee came along and Irishman perfected that. We don't talk about that too much. Uh, but that is why it's known as the coffee still. And instead, you know, if anyone, I'm going to talk about this a little bit because it's, it's a fair interest, but coffee still is a completely different way of distilling to pot still. Pot still is, in comparison, a bit more rough and ready where we're taking a much larger section of heads, hearts and tails. And that heart section is a much wider cut. And effectively what we're doing with a coffee still is just sectioning that off even more accurately. A coffee still allows you to take small sections of percentages and really accurately take and curate your new mixed spirit um, for what the distillers are looking for. And Jamie's talked about the volumes that Cameron Bridge is pushing out. And that is for the blended scotch. That's that big category, 85, 90% the majority of the time. Um, but we, we come along, we want to introduce things to our cask and our wood policy. We have, uh, you know, having a, that a choice of new mixed spirit to introduce it. It's, uh, it's amazing being able to curate new mixed spirit and make sure it's prepared for the specific types of casks that it's going into. And you've got a slide on cash here, which I actually thought was quite interesting. Because it, it kind of um, names and the sizes, which is something that tickles me. Yeah, and it's just something that, you know, it's just kind of a refresher for a lot of people. You know, legally, the SWA has to be oak that casks went to. You know, the amount of stuff that we're allowed to put into, I think just the 2019 Calvados has now made the, the cut. We're allowed to put stuff that's held Calvados in it before. Legally, it has to be 700 litres or less. It cannot exceed 700 litres. I think we've got a tonne cask on there. Uh, that you cannot put legally uh, whiskey in. I must age for a minimum of three years, but it's quite nice to see uh, the different sizes. You know, I think we've got hogsheads on here, we've got butts in the tasting as well, and we've got barrels, and it just shows you uh, going up sizes. I think it's always quite good for people to refresh themselves on it. I think there's, uh, there's some, there's some uh, loose terminology used in casks quite a lot, though, um, yeah. which is quite hard to... To, to keep up with or, or to, to keep going with. Um, there, I think there's a pretty big grey area between a barrel and a hogshead. Yeah. Um, which is, yeah, undefined, I think. Um, and sometimes you see, a, a, you know, a barrel or a, you know, a barrel yielding 390 bottles. And you're like, how can that be possible? <laughs> but um, yeah, so I think there's, there's some, there's some grey area there. Are we yeah. on to the next dram already? Yeah, it can do. Yeah, because uh, Hogshead itself is a fabricated size. You know, it doesn't actually, it never actually existed. It's, uh, it's a cask that was designed uh, to hold a certain level of volume. Um, so Hogshead arguably could be made out of butts, it could be made out of uh, ex-bourbon, um, but Hogshead is a fabricated size. Everything else exists, not obviously naturally, but organically within certain uh, areas and winemakers and you know, port makers, but liquid and alcohol makers across the world, whereas Hogshead was actually fabricated uh, and introduced to the sizing guide. Let's see. And the next one. 
Yes, it slow us down if we're moving too fast, but um, they're uh, they're tasting good. <laughs> well, you you sent me this one. Um, sent me a sample of this. Uh, I think it was late September, early October, when we were trying to choose what we we're going to do for the festival. And, and yeah, I, I thought it was super. absolutely right because it only got bottled in. Uh, Crikey, I think it got bottled in June or July. So it probably came out of the, the bottling warehouse sent you a sample before we did it. Um, it's a screamer. Um, absolutely delighted about it. And the, uh, it's a funny one. And uh, Victor and I, we met a couple of weeks ago. It's funny, we've done a few tastings of Victor and had never actually met each other. But we met last week in a wind tunnel in Lone Head. Is that right, Victor? No, oh, it was freezing. Really freezing. <laughs> oh, freezing. I had to sit outside because there was a, a chap who rather enjoyed his job, wouldn't give us a table inside. And um, the, and we were chatting about, about pricing and, and about whiskies and all sorts. Uh, <laughs> and this is one that I very much think that Victor is underpriced um, because I was saying to him that he should be charging 115 quid for this. Um, and I don't know what he actually charged, but... Uh, was it one call of a pound or something like that, Victor? <laughs> so, uh, so considering the last dram, uh, which which I, I mentioned, that the the, the twenty five year old Cameron Bridge and this one were only distilled six months apart. It's just the last bottling was quite old. Um, this one's been fully matured in a sherry butt. Um, absolutely gorgeous. Um, oh, there's so much dark fudge and tablet, and that's just a really rich, rich. Uh, flavour profile, you know, you've got that chewed leather and sweet tobacco that I always, personally, I always associate with grain whiskies, but it just converts itself. Yeah, and... 89 yeah. pounds it is. 89. I actually thought it was 95, but it's on the website at 89, so... <laughs> <laughs> Cost plus two pounds. Um, but the... Um, so the, the yield from this was, was tiny, and considering these sherry bucks, I mean, two guys can get a sherry buck, and they're absolutely huge. Um, so the about 700, 650 litres, uh, and there was only 322 bottles taken out of it, so less than 300 litres um, was the yield out of the cask. This has been bottled, it was, it was a refill sherry, but it's been bottled at 51.5%. And brilliant seeing the, the, the difference of, of the bourbon cask to, 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 the, to the sherry butt here. Uh, as Stuart was saying, things this for me, it smells like butter warming in a pan. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, I do like this one. We do, I mean, I think the we did a canvas in the, in the summer. I think it was a 26-year-old canvas we did. Um, yeah. Around about 40, it was low 40s percent. And that, that was that probably my grain of the year. This is probably mm. very, very close second. Mm. The last, uh, the canvas actually got sitting here. Um, that's the one from the summer. Uh, that was a really light refill. It must have been a second refill. Um, 26 year old. The colour on this is just absolutely superb. I mean, it's 1.5%. I don't know about anyone else, but the, the alcohol seems light on it. I mean, it's absolutely brilliant. I don't know if I'm going to spoil it by putting some water in, but I'm certainly going to go for it. I'm just running around my glass here and it's just sticking to it. Yeah. Uh, I've got, you know, I've got a little bit left in here. I'm just running around the glass. It's actually sticking to the inside of it. And it's you know you immediately see that texture and viscosity in the palate as well, just clinging to your teeth. Uh, it's quite different from from the canvas. Mm. I mean, it's like I was going to say there that the viscosity is like maple syrup, but actually the finish is like maple syrup. Yeah. I was meant to be uh, oh. I was meant to be saving a little bit for uh, my dad. That's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> Save him a wee bit. <laughs> What's everyone, what's everyone thinking of this? So this is the first 43.3. Well, I know Elliot's a big uh, big grain fan. Elliot, what do you think of this? This is over. That's great on this. Cheers, Jeremy. It's good. Thanks, Victor. Great, Elliot. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody can translate, please let me know. But you need to fix your mic somehow. It'd be a, it'd be a like a helicopter transmission. <laughs> <laughs> Andy McKeague, what do you make of the grains? 
Absolutely, Absolutely gorgeous. That 30 year old is amazing. Mm. Yeah. And I've been like, on you go, sorry. Sorry, what was the ABV on the 25? 50. 50, thank you. 50, they done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's getting better and better in the glass. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, this Cameron Bridge there is 51.5. Mm. Um, absolutely superb. So I'm going to ask, uh, Dan has been away painting the mash. Dan. Hello. Is your mic working? I think so. Yeah. How's the, have, you, have, you, have you managed to wash all that paint off you? Just about. Just about, mate. Now, you're a big fan of grain whiskey. What do you make of these ones? Uh, the 23 year old is my favorite, so now, yeah, yeah, it's really nice, really nice. And it might, might be a bit of a taboo, but the camera bridge 30 for me isn't all that. The, sorry, is what it isn't all that for me. It's not doing it for you, it's not. No, my oh, dear, dear, dear. Can you edit this part from the video going up on YouTube, Victor? <laughs> <laughs> so are you, are, you working, Dan. Are, are you are you working again tomorrow, Dan? I am, mate. Yeah. What's what's what's, what's next that's happening? Well, I've just machined all your MDF for your shelves, so that should be getting fitted tomorrow with a bit of luck. Okay. And were you going to ask um, Douglas Lane for some uh, knickknacks for the the match? Yeah, I was, supposedly. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> you want us to kit out with some uh, bits and pieces for decoration? Oh, yeah, that'd be really good. That'd be really good. A little bit of a sponsorship, that'd be great. No bother. There would, there would, there would have been a bottle of grain in there for you if we had a better review of this Cameron Bridge. But <laughs> <laughs> Ah, the Christmas spirit flowing from Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, cheers, Dan. We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, mate. I'm gonna have to. Uh, I've got a wee call from uh, from my better half. I will be back in a second. I have to take that. Oh. He's just said a scallywag statue, Jamie. Do you think we could get that an iron cast scallywag statue? An iron cast? Oh, is that I, I've I've put an iron cast there. We didn't have to do that actually. Greyfriars <laughs> Bobby. Remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still chewing away on this. Um, I know yeah. I've just I've just actually jumped ahead uh, on the nose to on the canvas there just quickly. Uh, I'm not going to take too much attention away from this this camera just now, but um, the fragrance going up is like a kind of perfume potpourri jumping into that nose. Uh, that's got a huge amount of richness, and then going back again, you get those more vanilla, you know, dried fruit notes on the. the previous two in comparison to the Cameron Bridge for me. That's when you're getting like rich honey and dark fudge. Yeah. Absolutely. The, the one thing I was going to say as well is that I know everyone's been putting in taste notes, but please do that because uh, well, <laughs> makes me and Jamie don't have to do our job. But <laughs> the one thing is that I always, I always do encourage it because at the end of the day, it's great for me and Jamie and Victor to give our tasting notes and what we're, we're nosing, but everyone's it's a subjective thing you know everyone's going to pick out different things from different whiskies i always do encourage it is give us your tasting notes what you know is what you what you taste because at the end of the day you might have someone else that's going to you know i've had weird stuff caramelized kiwi and you know great fantastic the weirder the better i always find it's really good for people to develop their own relationship with the liquid as opposed to just being like oranges yeah there is oranges great fantastic that might not always be the case the power of suggestion is a very big thing um, so I do encourage people to say, you know, like cinnamon, maple syrup, whatever it may be. And, and memories is a big thing uh, that I always talk about. Uh, once you smell something, the power of memories are, is a huge thing. Uh, they can take you back to specific moments in your life. So please do share if it's a <laughs> safe for work memory, let's say. <laughs> I don't know what everyone gets up to with maple syrup. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't agree with you more, Stuart. Um, you're sitting there... Uh, Years ago, I worked in the wine trade, and, uh, and it's a funny thing, and it's a it's a scary place for people to comment on on how things taste in case they're wrong, um, which is completely 
the whole the whole way of that is is the wrong way around. You know, we should yeah. be openly encouraging. And uh, the reason we, we want to see that people talk about their tasting notes and, and, and how they feel when, when they're tasting it is, um, is I always think everyone tastes the same things. I mean, I don't know about you, anyone else, but my wife tastes a lot more than me and, and for a long time than my tasting notes uh, when I was doing wine tastings before because their palate is just better than mine. And what can you do? Um, and But a lot of it's to do with tasting. Is, is You can all taste the same things. It's just about putting the vocabulary um, towards your palate and as soon as someone says to you you know that tastes like a you know a strawberry creme brulee whether that's correct or not and um, you can think to yourself well, crikey that bloody well does that does taste like a like a banana um, and actually as soon as you start thinking about it it's, connect, it's when the connection's made there's a moment where you think bloody hell that is great Chris has come up with an absolute belter I think this is probably one of my favourites of the year meadow grass fried in butter Topped with caramelised maple syrup and apple sponge. Isn't that just an absolute cracker of a taste to know? <laughs> That's what we're looking for. That's the benchmark right there. <laughs> I'm, I'm maybe just getting really hungry now, but... <laughs> <Is that special>? <laughs> <laughs> I literally am chewing this this one at the minute. Yeah. Oh, super. Fee, vanilla wafers, Charlie perfume, butterscotch, strawberry fruit gums, bananas, for and as Foster and Ambrosia Rice Pudding, brilliant. And that's, you know, these are notes that I've not picked up on, but I guarantee you go back to it and you'll start nosing and smelling these things. And that's the power of suggestion right there. And as Jamie said, it's not about getting anything wrong. You'll never be wrong. Uh, the only time that you would maybe be wrong in whiskey is if you said it was peat when there's no peat in it, but you can still get smoke from whiskey, uh, from heavily charred casks and whatever it may be. You can still get smoke and charred notes, but maybe not specifically peat, but that's the only time you would ever be... <laughs> strictly wrong and um, other than that it's free reign what you smell is what you smell who the hell are we to tell you that you're not smelling ambrosia rice pudding which i absolutely adore and i would absolutely love a kill for some ambrosia rice pudding <laughs> just <laughs> uh, john saying just going back to 25 year olds and they're super creamy and yeah i do encourage that and i know jamie does as well as going back the way and nosing things back the way because the amount of things change is, is amazing uh, especially when you go to a level of intensity upwards uh, Fair's ex bourbon maturation and older grains. Yeah, you know it's funny. I'm I'm the opposite, John. I prefer sherried grains, but I've got. I think I'm not sure, Jamie, if you, what you prefer. Um, but I know Fred likes a bourbon grain as, as much as sherry, but it's it, it, they give you two different flavour profiles from, you know, effectively the same you make spirit. Let's say, uh, depending on a number of factors, obviously, but it gives you completely different characters. Yeah, my, my go-to normally would be would be bourbon. Um, bourbon yeah. cask. One of my favourite ones that we tend to do is a an ongoing, or not not ongoing, but a, a replaceable line is that we do a port and das, which we kind of when it, whenever it runs out, kind of gets replenished with something similar. A support and das, fifteen year old that's generally been finished in a in a Pedro Jimenez cask for six months, and Fred loves showing it. It's one of his favourite things to show in between. A kind of a round of a tour of Scotland tasting, and uh, and when you've got that in there as a surprise dram, almost everybody nails it out as a, a space side, um, yeah. not realizing that actually the, the sherry influence just that six months can just change it. It's, it maybe maybe it just shows how much we're led by the eye, um, and yeah. you can see something sherry and go straight to space side. But no, I, I love the uh, uh, for, from a refill bourbon cask we were talking about before doing this grain tastings and grain tastings are, are more difficult than, than others because you do have similar profiles with things you know as i was sure i were joking about this earlier on is you know how many times you can say vanilla and pineapple but it's but it's it's true I mean, you do use similar profiles but that's exactly my palate <laughs> i absolutely love it uh, scottish west coaster as i always say sugar in my frosties so i love sugar love sweetness uh, and that's what I tend to go for. Uh, however, that said, that Cameron Bridge is utterly superb. Um, yeah. and, uh, hey, wait, wait till we try the other Sherry one, but we've got coming up last that's uh, quite unbelievable. So the, we move on to the fourth tram. We'll just leave Victor to it. I'm back, yeah. I'm back, I'm back. Oh, you're I back. saw the cursor moving. There he is. Where are we? There we go. We're on the canvas. Here we are. No, just uh, canvas, which is just down the road from me in... Uh, 
Alloa, uh, Stirlingshire. Um, just put just put this up for fun. An advert from in the, the the Daily Mail from 1906 when the the what is whiskey trials were happening. Just, just because Canvas isn't the bonniest place in the world, didn't want to put a picture up of it. <laughs> and uh, Canvas now is a major cooperage for uh, most of Diageo, I think. Um, so that's they moved almost everything to Canvas and a uh, huge big cooperage there. Brilliant place. Um, but straight into the whiskey. So this is a 30-year-old cask strength canvas. So this is one of our XOP bottlings. All of our XOP bottlings are, are cask strength. This is from a refill barrel, 336 bottles. This, these are the final two bottles that have been decanted for this tasting. As you say, you know, Jamie, um, vanilla and pineapple, as you said it. But on the nose, I am genuinely getting there is that vanilla and pineapple in it. <laughs> the power of suggestion, eh? I know. <laughs> but this is this is from a closed distillery. Uh, Elliot's asked forty three point nine. I'm assuming that's the ABV, and this is forty six percent ABV. Um, yeah, yeah. The nose is brilliant. Um, you know, the vanilla and pineapple definitely is there. Quite woody. Um, didn't really expect biscuity. Maybe comes with the woodness and, and vanilla, but it's absolutely superb. 46% is quite a low ABV, lovely mouthfeel as well. I mean, yeah, I, and as Jim, oh sorry, on you go. I was going to say it's a lovely whiskey, but after that Cameron Bridge, I, am I allowed to say it's a wee bit, tastes a wee bit thin? Yeah, I, I'd go with that. I'd go with that, absolutely. Uh, the mouthfeel isn't quite worth it from, from where the Cameron Bridge was. But no, uh, but it's actually... It, it's, it tastes great. It really does. It's, yeah, it's a very different one. It's, a, it's just a different drink. Mm. You know, and as, as Jamie talked about with our XOPs, that everything that we do with our XOPs is natural cash strength, uh, non-chill filtered, no caramel colouring. The only thing, and I, I really, I, I emphasise this because I think it's actually quite amazing. You don't often get it in the whiskey industry as a whole. Is the only thing that has been done to that liquid is filtered, is make sure that there's no wood and char coming out the cask. And that's it. This is the liquid from the cask, effectively. It's the only thing that's been done is that it's filtered. Not, not chill filtered, just filtered. So, I mean, what we're drinking is the pure selection of um, whoever had selected this, which Fred, Cara, Chris, whoever it was, has selected this and gone, that is good enough to be bottled. Because 99.9% .9 of casks within the whiskey industry are used within single malt, which is technically blending. You know, you're blending just casks from the same distillery. Uh, blended scotch, of course, is the behemoth that it is. Uh, each single grains, of course, are still technically blended, and so are blended malts that we do uh, with a remarkable regional malts. A blended grain, obviously, a much smaller category. So, you know, that point, and I'm making up figures here, obviously, 0.1%, the smallest amount of casks in the whiskey industry are selected on the back of the, they are the whole package. They actually offer something that is worth being bottled as a single cask, and that is not something that is common. You know, the majority of the bottles that you see in the whiskey industry in the world is technically blended, whether it's single malt, blended malt, blended scotch, whatever it may be. So to have a single cask is, you know, it's, it's amazing to be able to have something that's got that that whole package. The go a bit commercial on it, but the, the, the price difference here, and uh, this retails at 190 pounds a bottle, but around about that, 170 to 190 pounds. Um, so it's interesting seeing the comments. Um, people preferring the Cameron Bridge 30 to this, which is um, well, j just slightly less than half the price of Cameron Bridge. So it's, it's in interesting seeing the, the, the difference. I suppose Canvas is, is a closed distillery and there's no more liquid like this coming out, but um, you know, for half the price, you're getting some a liquid of the same age, but aged in a, in a sherry bar with the Cameron Bridge. Well, interesting to see the, the direct comparison. Yeah, and going back and forth between these, that genuine direct comparison, what a stark difference between the two. Oh, I go back. Oh, wow. Going back to the camera bench, the nose is completely different now. Yeah, that's where I'm seeing a lot more of that chewed, sweet leather. As weird I know as I know that is, but it's, it's a very stark difference between the two. Jammy tart. Are you talking about me there, Chris? About a crumb base, a drizzled clot of cream. <laughs> <laughs> Victor, have we still got some camera bridge left? Camera bridge, what, 30? Aye. Aye I've got plenty of that left. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I think it's, what, um, just, Jamie, oh, 
we, we the, the the canvas from the summer, it's it's almost sold out. In fact, it might be sold out. I'd have to have a look. There was I think there was one box left last week when I looked. Um, it's a real what I find is that they're, they're kind of real slow burners, you know. But forget like a Glen Farkas, we just done, you know, we just done a twenty year old. They kind of they kind of move like a train, you know. Boom, 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 they all go. What I find with these is they, you, you kind of get you, you, about half of them go through the festival and over the first six weeks, and then it's just a constant boom, 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 boom. People come back to it, you know, they finish it and they come back by an art bottle or they get a recommendation, or, or I guess sometimes they look at the price and think, 30 old whiskey for 89 quid, I'll, I'll have a go at that. Yeah. But but that's what happened with the canvas. So, you know, I was we, can, we all looked at it actually, when the, you know, everybody was uh, volunteering at the festival. At the end of the festival, we did a stock take and we're like, holy shit, we've been left with a few boxes of it, but it's gone. And and I suspect that's what, that's what will happen with this Cameron Bridge. So there, there is plenty at the moment, but four or five months, I think it'll be gone. Yeah. You know, when we're talking about grain distilleries, yeah, we, we don't kind of have the, the same appeal as a uh, Glen Farkless. So that it's, um, yeah, understandable that, that it's a, a slower mover than a single cask uh, Glen Farkless. But I don't know whether that's more of a, a tribute to the liquid that the same folk are coming back and buying it once, you know, two or three times. Yeah. I want to bring uh, uh, Andrew Watkinson in because he's... Uh, He's just picked up a couple of bottles of grain at OP. What do you think of the selection so far, Andrew? Yeah, it's really good. Uh, really enjoying that canvas. That's really, really nice. It's really gentle, just like me. <laughs> I saw you with, with a tape gun, Andrew, and you definitely were not <laughs> gentle. Those boxes were getting hammered. Got a couple of bottles of the Cameron Bridge as well, and that's that's really good. But I, I, the canvas for me is just just really really nice. I think I'd take yeah. the Cameron I'd take the canvas over the Cameron Bridge. Cool. Nice, nice. So just uh, you know, before we get into the the last round, which is Jamie's <laughs> foreshadowed is an absolute corker. It's an absolute belt of a jam. Yeah, um, just uh, to kind of talk about what we're actually drinking today, you know. As Jamie's talked about, it's pretty difficult doing a lineup of five single grain, single cast single grains, which all of them are, because uh, at the end of the day, it's it's a very unique category that not, we don't know as the whiskey industry and, and consumers, we don't know a lot about. Um, but as I kind of talked about earlier, is it's the, one of the five categories of whiskey. So at the top, you've got your parents, your single malt, single grain, underneath the three kids. So under the single malt, two or more single malts, blended malt, of course, two or more single grains makes blended grain. And in the middle, the big fat baby, I like to call him, much to the dismay of many Johnny Walker ambassadors across. <laughs> and the reason I call it the big fat baby is that it's the biggest category, making up you know 90% of the Scotch whiskey industry market. It's massive. Um, but you know, above your single malt, single grain, as it said earlier, single malt, single grain, we talk about the marriage of casks as a professional courtesy. But you can marry casks from the same distillery and you're still making single malt as long as it comes from that same new mixed spirit, that same bloodline uh, of distillery. So above that is what I always talk about is your single cask selections. And what we're talking about here is single malt is single distillery, malt meaning specifically barley, only barley, and single grain is single distillery, grain meaning anything that is not barley. So wheat, corn, rye, maize, but more often than not, wheat will be used. And then what we're drinking tonight is single cask selections. So these have all been selected individually uh, for the merits, as I'd said, for, for they stand up as a single cast, then there's only X amount of bottlings available of them at any one time. And the great, the one thing I love and hate about single casks is, you know, if you love it, you'll never taste it again, unless you buy two bottles like Andrew's done. But, uh, you know, that way you'll taste it once and it's, you can get another one that's going to be maybe a sister cask and the same flavor profile, but the specifics will always be different. Uh, and that's what I love and hate about it is I can taste a single cask but that's just completely up my street. I adore that. And then all of a sudden you realize, I'm going to finish the bottle. I'm never going to taste that specifically again. But that's where the, you know, you go down the line, you'll taste another one they absolutely adore. But that's that's what's really unique about single cast and what we're bringing tonight. So just to just to uh, ask you a question about your range, you, we, we've had a couple of bottles of, well, more than a couple, actually. We've had quite a few bottles of um, XOP Black come down. Now, I can remember a canvas 40, I think it was, 
that was an XLP black. And it comes in the most amazing felt black box that, that you know, might be made out of a short-haired cat. Um, and, it, and it's beautifully presented. What, what gives it the black status? Jamie, do you want to do that or shall I? Go for it. <laughs> yeah, sorry, you brought me on. It's obvious that's a one word answer. Uh, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> Fred decides. Yeah, yeah, it's just, um, you know, we've got, in terms of, let's say, price and caliber, you know, you're going from your Premier Barrels upwards of Providence, all particular, and then we've got XOP, and then above that is XOP Black. And these are just, you know, as, as Jamie said, Fred, Karen, Chris have found exceptional quality liquids. I mean, usually it's 40 years plus that these liquids will always be. Uh, there has been examples of 35 years old. I think not most recently, the second last one was a 45-year-old Port Ellen. Or was it a 40-year-old, Jamie? 40-year-old Port Ellen. and then 40-year-old Port Ellen. Yeah, but there's been a couple, there's a couple younger. The, the one we did... Um... Three weeks ago was a Glen Roth is thirty, um, which was that was it. OVD rum, so dark. And there's 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 two two upcoming. Uh, one of them that I told Victor and hope Victor doesn't say anything just now. Um, and which is a, a fifty year old. But but we'll keep my powder dry on that one, and I'll let you know Victor when that one comes about because it's your favourite distillery. But the the XOB Blacks really are the the, the crown jewels. It's, it's funny when you talk to Fred about the. The, I mean, Fred did a, did a tasting with, with this crowd six months ago. Um, talk about the, the different liquids, and if only he'd known how the market had gone, he wouldn't be he wouldn't have put so much Port Ellen in his blends in the eighties. Um, it's <laughs> incredible. You just don't know where the market's going to go. Uh, and now releasing a XOP Black Port Ellen, which is retailing at I can't quite remember just now, about four thousand quid a bottle. I think is about right. Um, is m madness, <laughs> absolutely madness. So I had a phone call this afternoon with, from a man who was in a little bit, of, a little bit confused and a little bit of panic, um, and he had a tasting pack, and he said, "Vic, I've got the Douglas Lang tasting pack, um, but what, what, what is it that's in it? It's, the bottles are numbered one, two, three, four, five. And I was like, "Hmm, I think you've got the blind tasting from the beginning of December." Mm -hmm. Oh shit! Within ten minutes, Nick. You were at my door. Have have you are, you? are you going to do the blind tasting or are you doing the the grain tasting? Yeah, I'll uh, I'll look at the blind tasting online. I'll follow that for you. I was I it was up it was halfway to you. I thought should I have brought it with me? And uh, then I just thought I wouldn't mention it. You weren't getting away with it without me telling that story. <laughs> no, no, yeah, that was. Um, I, I yeah, check the uh, check the name on it. That was good enough. But yeah. Strange one. Yeah, there you go. Something Just remember that Victor's talking rubbish throughout the whole would I lie to you tasting. He doesn't tell the truth once, just so you know. <laughs> oh, that'll be okay, fair enough. That'll help me out. Looking forward to it. I mean, what a bonus, though. What a bonus. Unfortunately, I managed to spot it before the, the start of the whiskey. Um, yeah. Was on the, You'd the, have been the, double the, confused if you'd uh, started this one with, with those drums. I think one of them's. Uh, I won't spoil it for you. I won't spoil it for you. But I don't think one of them's not whiskey. Okay. Look forward to it. Look forward to it. Ruined it. <laughs> Good. Right on to the the last one, Victor. Yeah. So this is a one of a or two. Um, it's, it was disappointing when this uh, we ran out of stock of this a couple of weeks ago, a couple of well, about two months ago. Um, it was a, a cracker, and I put it in the same category as the Camera Bridge 30 year old uh, that we tasted two grams ago. Um, so, this is a fully matured and a, a refill sherry, but Inver Gordon 30 year old. 440 bottles came out of the sherry, but again, quite a low yield 52%, um, 52.4%, and it was distilled in August 1988. 30-year-old, um, if you can flick down one slide, Victor, that'd be great. Um, so it's a 30-year-old Inver Gordon with an absolutely amazing colour on it, which will come through here. Hopefully you can see it in your glass and you can and you, and you can see yeah. it. Oh. So I, I think we had, we had, we had um, 
three or four cases of this uh, through the summer, and um, it it didn't last very long. I think we did we taste this earlier on this year, Jamie. Yeah, we tasted it in May, maybe 28th, 29th of May. Right. Um, so it's Whiskey Club taster. And this off, the, off the back of that, quite a few people picked up bottles from of it from me. And um there was one bottle, it's been sitting uh it's been sitting in the corner of this room actually for probably well, it must be six months. And uh I kept looking at it thinking, I wonder why I've got that left. And then I'd kind of, you know, a wee bit later I'd remember, ah. That, be that belongs to Pradeep. I need to get that sent down to him. And I uh, only got it sent to him with the all the festival bottles for this festival. So the, I think he got it earlier on this month. Pradeep, I know you're not feeling very well, but have you start have you started into this Invergordon yet? He's Sorry, Victor. So so I, I, I think you, you got the last bottle of this. Oh, yes. I haven't opened it yet. Ah. <laughs> I have other bottles. I have to start opening. Great problem to have. No, this is um, for me straight away. And, you know, I've deliberately not said anything about how it tastes yet. But for me, it just it straight away like bananas. Like, I, I cannot... Cannot remove my brain from it, and um, straight away just like bananas and like overripe bananas, and lovely and biscuity. The fullness in the mouth is absolutely superb. Like the Cameron Bridge, like the the viscosity, it's just exactly in my palate. It just it fits it fits perfectly. No, it's amazing. The bananas is definitely thing. Fee said one that's uh, resonated with me is peanut M Ms, which I am a big fan of. But it definitely has that real not dark chocolate but it's it's a milk definitely a milk chocolate but it's it's got a richness to it but there's a nuttiness to it um and yeah bananas like a kind of banana fritter there's you know there's butter in there there's spices there's cinnamon and just the color's great i mean again it's, it's natural color and it's just lovely to see whiskeys with the natural color that that as well absolute cracker and the mouth feels just just outstanding it's funny, I think it was only 10 minutes ago when he asked me, uh, sure, where my prepared casking would be for a, a green whiskey. I said, a refill of all sets, uh, but yeah, my two favourites in this lineup of five are both uh, <laughs> <laughs> cherry bags. <laughs> so completely gone against what I had said. I think my, my two favourites tonight are the, I, I, I adored that Cameron Bridge uh, 30 in the middle. I absolutely loved that. I, can't, I just can't stop thinking about it. And I think just as how unique the nose was on it, I, I love that Invergarden, and I don't want to take away from it, but I think how unique the nose was at the canvas is probably my second uh, favourite of the night. But that Invergarden is... <laughs> if I drink my, my dad's section of this sample, it might it might push me over uh, as my favourite. Like Nigel's note there, rum and raisin ice cream with a lump of old Jamaica on top. Absolutely. And if anyone's any of that camera bridge to go back to just now. Uh, for me, I mean, I only poured this an hour ago, but um, it's completely opened. I mean, it's become sweeter and sweeter, like raisins. It's absolutely brilliant. Oh, cool. It has, actually. It has. No, yeah. It needs an hour in the glass. <laughs> it needs an hour in the glass. At what point do you start drinking the whiskey, Victor? Is it on the fire date? Sorry? At what point do you start drinking the whiskey properly? Do you, do you, do you save yourself until the last tasting? Uh, well, I usually go for halves all the way through, and then we've got uh, Ian McAllister's on after you, so uh, he's, he sent some really, really nice Glen Scotia, uh, and, and uh, they'll be getting finished. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, what I'm doing with the other half is I'm, I'm building up an infinity bottle for the... Oh, nice. For the festival, so all the all the bits are going in here. Oh, good. Uh, I do the same thing with uh, with an infinity bottle that I've got upstairs that from all the tastings. I'll go with my stack poly mug and then and then goes in uh, my infinity bottle, which is almost full actually. I'm a I'm a terror for opening bottles of whiskey, drinking three drams out of them, then moving on to the next one. I need to actually start finishing bottles of whiskey and stop buying them, um, especially because my my wife's now on the ninth month of maternity pay. <laughs> 
and they were stop, stopping by whiskey at some point. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I'll do with the Infinity bottle is I'll, um, I'll bottle it up and send it out to folk. There you go. The festival in a bottle. Nice. We did it in the summer and it tasted all right. It was a wee bit heavy on the peat, I thought, but um, I think I'm not sure if the constituent parts made up a better drum. Well, John, I think I'd imagine that's Andrew's brother. John Watkinson's helping me with a, a label just now uh, that we did it a bottling for. I can't, I can't, I can't recommend John's services uh, enough. For his help and, and doing a wee bit of on the side work for me. Thanks, John. No problem, James. Very kind of you to say so. <laughs> I mean, I've um, I've thoroughly enjoyed doing all the design work for the festival and for the uh, for the labels for the bottles and things we've done done for this and working with Victor on those has been great. Um, and it was it was great to get the, the call from you as well to to help you out with yours. So yeah, um, I think that was looking great. So looking forward to seeing it on a bottle. Yeah, absolutely. And we. And a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a blended bottle he heading your way as well, John, which was a, a, a nice fee. Thank you. <laughs> Just need to actually make it. Made a, a family blend. Sure. Made a family blend of whiskies from uh, where, where I grew up. So um, we'll see how that turns out. Very nice. No, very nice. Well, guys, you've you've kind of rattled through that pretty quick. No. It's only seven o'clock. You disappeared for half of it as well, Victor. Have we got any more? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be good to, uh, I mean, we've, we've picked our favourites. It'd be good to hear what um, what people's favourites were of the night as well, yeah, if you want to type that in. That'd be good to see. Because I know there was a, I can't remember, I mean, as I've mentioned mine, my two, but it'd be good to see what people's favourites were of the night. Because I think that I, it, it was quite nice to go between two sherry variants of grain. To that canvas, I think it was almost, you know, as, as Victor said, it was thinner, but it had that kind of palate cleansing effect going into the Inver Gordon. Elliot Stratum and Inver Gordon, which I think would go very well with cigar as well, mate. <laughs> canvas. Well, I know mine's going. Are you, you typing yours in? We're allowed to pick a favourite, aren't we? It's not like children. Canvas 30 and Inver Gordon 30. I had the Northbridge 23 earlier this year, much I love too. Good. Canvas edges it. Invergordon, Canvas. Is that an order, Andrew? I imagine it is. Yeah. Oh, good. Some, some brilliant drums. It's funny seeing the Canvas. Um, for me, Stuart, you said the Canvas, one of your favourites. I would say my, my my top would be the the Cameron Bridge Thirty. I think uh, it just that was my top. Yeah, that was my top. It's all the boxes for me. I think it's utterly superb, um, and I, and I will be <laughs> buying a bottle of it. Um, and then after that, I think it would be trying to remind myself. Uh, the second dram, the twenty five year old Cameron Bridge, I think was utterly amazing. Mm -hmm. And then on to the Inver Gordon Thirty, I think I've kind of changed my mind on that. So that'd be my one, two, three. But yeah, I absolutely love them. Uh, delighted to sit and drink these drams again. And I'm, I'm quite happy to still got some Cameron, Cameron Bridge 30 left, which is, um, yeah, superb. I have to say, yeah. I really enjoyed going back to the Inver Gordon 30, though. I think, uh, considering, unless, unless Pradeep saves me some and invites me around, I'm probably not going to get any more. That's a hint there. <laughs> I've still got a bottle, Victor. You're okay. Ah, oh, look, I'm good for it. Thank you. <laughs> there you go, Pradeep. Save by the bill. <laughs> I, I'm seeing you back in London, soon, Victor. Well, who knows when we'll get back to London? Hopefully, hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. I'll get myself jabbed up and, uh, and get down there. Oh, I'm, I'm building antibodies now, as we say, speak. Yeah, thank you. One or two people are, unfortunately. <laughs> You I'm going to get for you. We can um, sit when George is not looking and have some there. <laughs> Don't say stuff like that. He'll get barbed. We'll get thrown out. He was on. Uh, he was on the William Grant uh, 
tasting earlier today was George and he was in fine form. I think he's a little bit nervous about the blind drams I've sent to him for uh, Wednesday afternoon. The blind for him as well. Hi. <laughs> That's a bit brutal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> How's that working? Is that, I think I had a look at it. So there's 10 whiskies, but there's six drams out in a pack. Yeah, yeah. So it's a bit of a, there's four that are, everybody's got, and then there's two that are a bit of a lucky dip. All right. And then I had to make some more up because somehow we miscounted and ran out. So, so actually there's two that are lucky dip and then the last packs that have gone out, I've got two extras that are something else that's completely. So it's just, it's a little bit made up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we know how that feels, Stuart, don't we? Okay. <laughs> Amount of samples that we've had to make up and send out and making sure that you get the same ones and oh my days it's great fun oh, great God. fun we, and then you forget yourself half the time oh, and you realize like oh God, i not got any whiskey <laughs> we, we're doing a, a tasting for in, in in january for timorous beastie if anyone knows our blended highland malt um so blended highland malt using this um, single malt whiskey single cast single malt from the highlands and we're doing a, a, a tasting for uh, Burns night 20 on the 25th of, of January and it was just a wee kind of thing we talked about and I sent it out to a few folk and everybody has said yes to it and so we're now looking at without having to try I sent an email out on the 23rd of December and uh, I think about 20 people have said yes and by saying yes that means there's 35 people at a tasting and this is all in one for Stuart to do so if, you can, if anyone could work out about 25 well well what 25 times 35 is um, and then add in three bottles going to each person um, it quite quickly gets into the thousands I think uh, oh, it's not <laughs> counting the, the 4am Canada tasting that I've got as well on the Saturday <laughs> oh my god <laughs> uh, yeah it's uh, oh, it's nothing better than cash friend whiskey enough Saturday morning four <laughs> <laughs> you had this before uh, <laughs> dilemma of whether you stay up or go to bed yeah uh, isn't it just in my joggies with a shirt tucked in? <laughs> <laughs> like I am now, of course. <laughs> well, I don't think anybody in Southport feels sorry for you, have because uh, having having put this festival together, which has been what twelve whiskey companies, five samples each. Don't know how many bottles. Oh God! I know. Uh, I know. And it's all done in, in in a big fridge, so everybody's freezing cold. Thanks, Chris. Well, you know, what, you know what the great thing is with, with 2020 is that, you know, I may, applaud you, Victor. It's amazing being able to do that. The sense of community that clubs like Southport have, have been able to create is, is amazing that we're still able to do this. And everyone now has mastered Zoom and mastered everything that they're able to. And we can actually engage and understand and talk because, my God, it's been a saving grace for me is still being able to see people regardless. As, you know, I look away for a second. I'm looking at a laptop screen here, but it's still nice to be able to share ideas and talk about things with like-minded people because you know festivals are out the window just now but it's it's great so i applaud you victor well done yeah, thank you for no, having I us think, on and fully with that stuart as well like you with, out with covid uh, you know pre-covid there wouldn't be a single whiskey festival in the world on the 28th of december ever that would have ever happened because there's not a chance in hell that stuart or i would um, you know, drive to Southport, drive to London, drive to anywhere uh, this time of year just wouldn't happen. So um, we're, we're delighted to be involved with this, like absolutely delighted. And um, yeah, more power to you, Victor. Gone and um, gone and done it when when nobody else did it. So uh, we're delighted to be on board with you. Thank you. All right, I'm getting sent 138 years worth of grain. Great. <laughs> Thanks for all the grain. Uh, anybody else want to chip in or ask a question? If not, we'll we'll let the lads go back to the their families and their beers. I oh, don't do that. I've spent far too much time with them already. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be in, in 10 minutes, so if we just wait <laughs> 10 minutes, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Jamie, I'll stay, on. I'll stay on with you, don't worry. We've been up two days of festival, so uh, if you guys uh, want to jump in at any point, feel free if uh, you want to use it as an excuse, Jamie. Oh, please. Uh, you, you can. Um, <laughs> 
But listen, I really do appreciate you putting this together for us tonight. Um, getting the last bottles of some of these old grains has, has been really quite special. I, I know certainly I was quite excited to do it and, and it's, uh, it's come good. Um, we have uh, the one and only Ian McAllister in 50, 53 minutes. Uh, beaming live from Glen Scotia. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to call time to this session. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Stuart. And we'll see everyone. Pleasure. In As always. Three minutes. Take care, guys. Bye.